the Glazers might finally be on their way out of Manchester United. The end could very well be near, boys and girls. There was a lengthy statement yesterday from Manchester United, which I will read out and then I'll give you my thoughts on it. Manchester United announces the process to explore strategic alternatives to enhance the club's growth. Manchester United PLC, one of the most successful and historic sports clubs in the world, announces today that the company's board of directors is commencing the process to explore strategic alternatives for the club. The process is designed to enhance the club's future growth with the ultimate goal of positioning the club to capitalise on opportunities both on the pitch and commercially. As part of this process, the board will consider all strategic alternatives, including new investment into the club, a sale or other transactions involving the company. This will include an assessment of several initiatives to strengthen the club, including a stadium, infrastructure redevelopment and expansion into the club's commercial operations on a global scale, each in the context of enhancing long-term success of the club's men's, women's and academy teams and bringing benefits to its fans and stakeholders. Co-executive chairman and directors Avram Grant and Joel Glazer said, the strength of Manchester United rests on the passion and loyalty of our global community of 1.1 billion fans and followers. For starters, we all know that that is a false, just incorrect number. We know that that number was based on how many people can recognise the Manchester United logo. If you're a Liverpool fan, you recognise the logo. If you're a Barcelona fan, you recognise it. I reckon it's probably inflated United's numbers three or four, potentially even five X. So I'm a read, continue reading, but just as a little asterisk alongside that note, that's a load of bollocks. As we seek to continue building on the club's history of success, the board has authorized a thorough evaluation of strategic alternatives. We will evaluate all options to ensure that we, have, that we best serve our fans and that Manchester United maximizes the significant growth opportunities available to the club today and the future. Throughout this process, we remain fully focused on serving the best interests of our fans, stakeholders, and uh, various uh, stakeholders, shareholders, and various stakeholders. The Rain Group is acting as the company's exclusive financial advisor, and Latham and Watkins is legal counsel to the company. Rothschild is acting as uh, exclusive financial advisor to the Glazers and shareholders. Here's the interesting part. There can be no assurance that the review being undertaken will result in any transaction involving the company. Manchester United does not intend to make further announcements regarding the review unless and until the board has approved a specific transaction or other cause of action requiring a formal announcement. The sausage rolls are on old boys and girls. We're not quite at party time just yet. Now, what does this actually mean? The last paragraph doesn't think that the sausage roll party is imminent, does it? Various sort of people from Chris Wheeler to Mark Kleiman from the sky, you know, they're talking about investment bankers being instructed. Essentially, that's what that comes out as. Mike Keegan has said, Jim Ratcliffe carried out a feasibility study on the cost of buy United as well as redevelop Old Trafford and Carrington. It was met with a flat denial by his people who said that they were purely concentrating on Nice. The Glazer family have instructed banks to handle the sale of MUFC. They are expected to make this decision public in a statement on Tuesday. That was that statement. That was from The Athletic. Uh, and the sale of MUFC could be far in excess of the club's stock market valuation since the latest news broke the share price risen by 17%. Now, how much of all of this really was kicked on by the Cristiano Ronaldo announcement and how much of this announcement's timing, as Ronaldo said himself, timing is everything, how much of the timing of this announcement was um, designed to quieten the news about Cristiano Ronaldo? I don't think they're unconnected, but I don't think they're intrinsically connected. I think that United were probably in the process of letting this information out there and the timing worked for them, so they probably moved it forward and announced it. Did Cristiano Ronaldo, was he the straw that brought the camels back in terms of the sale of the club? I honestly don't believe that's the case. I believe the European Super League had far more to do with it. And honestly, if, if you don't think that you've not been paying attention or you don't fully understand the business of Manchester United anywhere near enough... Manchester United don't make money having Cristiano Ronaldo on the team. Um, 
there are probably some financial incentives to have Cristiano Ronaldo, but they don't make money directly on the back of having Cristiano Ronaldo. I don't believe he is a net positive, certainly over the last 12 months, when it comes to his wage and what you get out of him. The fact he's got 500 million followers, I don't necessarily think translates to the club growing any more than it already was. I think people who follow Cristiano Ronaldo, they know about Manchester United already. So there is no net positive, in my opinion, to having Cristiano Ronaldo from a pure PR and sort of marketing point of view. I don't think that's the case. Did Cristiano Ronaldo calling out the Glazers enact any change? That remains to be seen. It's not impossible. But I, as I said earlier, I think the two major drivers in all of this, the first one for me has to be the global financial markets and the global recession that we're about to hit. I think that had a, a far more damaging impact on the club than Cristiano Ronaldo's interview with Piers Morgan. And I think the the failure to achieve Super League status was the most damaging. The financial projections that came out of what was going on with the European Super League, for me, that was where you could see exactly what the Glazers were all about. That was where you could see exactly what they were trying to do with the club. So as I said, no sausage roll party just yet. But I think it's a positive move. I mean, so much of that statement was absolute fluff. I'm going to pull it up again because, honestly, it was a, there was a lot of wibble in there, wasn't there? I'm going to say it was 50 60% wibble. Just as we seek to continue to build on the club's history of success. Okay, the club's got a history of success. But the history of the Glazers at Manchester United is not successful. It isn't. The foundations of the team that won the Champions League in 2008 was, was in place and there. And the fact that they won it on your watch was a timing thing, not a because of the Glazers thing. It just wasn't. Unless that you think Nani and Anderson were the major reasons that we won the Champions League, because they weren't. Michael Carrick maybe have been one of the pieces. The Glazers have just, I mean, this is just pure PR waffle. Everything focused on serving the best interests of our fans and our shareholders and stakeholders. It's never been about that for the Glazers. It's never been about that. It's just wring every single ounce out of it. They haven't invested into the stadium. They haven't invested into the training ground. They've only recently begun to invest into the team and the investment that they've put into the team has been mismanaged because they've put it in under people who are idiots. And this isn't necessarily managers. I think every single manager that we've had post Sir Alex has been focused on trying to do the right thing correctly. But the people in the front of office, Ed Woodward especially, these are the people that have mismanaged the significant investment that the team has had over the last decade or so, in my opinion. This is a positive step, though, because we have never seen them talk about leaving, ever. And the fact that they are now talking about leaving, for me, is a, is a huge positive. So even though nothing is on the table currently, we'll have to see. We'll see where it leads us, but I think it's probably a positive. Just a quick one before I go. If you would like to get your hands on some very, very special Paddock FC merch, we have got two pieces that are complete limited edition. And when I say limited edition, I don't think I can stress just how limited edition they are. And they're absolutely mega. They're, they're so fresh, I haven't even got my own yet. I've got some saved for myself, don't worry. But they're, they're super, super limited edition. They will be the only ones that we do. It's a Paddock and Puma collaboration, totally custom stuff just for us. So if you want your hands on them, they are very, very limited. There's literally like a handful in each size. So don't delay. If you want to get your hands on them, they look mega. Um, check the link in the description. Hey, thank you for watching the video. If you are new around these parts, then don't forget to subscribe. My channel is proudly supported by my community on Patreon. If you'd like to get a little bit of extra content, a Discord group, meetups, five-a-side games, weekly podcasts, behind the scenes, and even an occasional bit of transfer news as and when I get it, 
then for the price of a pint, you can show your appreciation for the content that we make and get some goodies for doing so as well. Check the link in the description or click the button right here. You'll also find all of my socials here too if you want to follow me on any of those platforms. Nice one.